Well, for more on top players in the toy industry and whether or not toys are worth investing in, let's bring in Christopher Byrne. He's a content director at Toys, Tots, Pets and more. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Now, what are your thoughts in terms of toys being an alternative investment vehicle? Well, I think they're a little bit risky. I think that the, the challenge is always, if you're going to invest in something, is somebody going to buy it? I mean, you can put thousands of dollars into something, but then if nobody wants it, uh, that's a problem. I mean, cast your mind back to the Beanie Babies. Uh, Peanut the Blue Elephant at one time was valued at $2,000. But if you didn't sell it then, it's probably worth about 39 cents now. And that, that's got to be a real, uh, real punch in the gut if you spent all that money on Beanie <laughs> Babies. Now, let's also look at Danish company Lego. It's been around since 1932, yet it's still popular and even expanding its production into countries including China. What's behind Lego's success? Well, I think one of the things behind Lego's success has been licensing. Certainly the Star Wars license, uh, recent movies like the Lego movie, the Batman movie, which just opened, the, uh, the ability to have models that kids want to build, play with, and display, it really is something that's, that's as unique as every child because they bring something to it that really is about their own self-expression and they, they do a beautiful job with it. There's really nobody out there doing construction sets who does it as beautifully or as elegantly as Lego. Now, not every toy or not every company is about kind of putting your own creativity on it. Now, some toys do end up commanding a bigger price tag than others. So what are some other examples of toy collectibles that have a healthy return on investment? Well, it's hard to know because really, as I said, if, if you have something, you need to find a buyer. But certainly collectible dolls for people who know them, such as the Jean doll, which is now discontinued, or Robert Tonner dolls, or some of those, if you find an audience that wants to buy them and the doll is discontinued, you can absolutely uh, make more than your money back uh, or and sometimes a significant profit. But you really have to be cagey and know the, know the market pretty well. Barbie, of course, is... Uh, People have spent a lot of money on Barbie collectibles, but really in the last 20 years, Barbie collectibles have been for people who love them. You know, there's a reason that a, a 1959 mint Barbie in box could get about $6,000 in the U.S. because children played with most of them, and those are very, very rare. And obviously it's, it's difficult when it comes to things like nostalgia and trying to figure out what's going to be worth more versus whether you just want to play with it. So what's your idea then on the take that Collecting toys perhaps isn't as profitable because now toy companies are getting better at really anticipating the sort of demand and, and tailoring their output accordingly. Well, I think that's a, that's a very valid point. I think that when, when something is marketed as a collectible, they're making a lot of them and able to judge the marketplace. And I, you, we heard in the report about people who buy one and put one away. That's certainly something that people are doing. But you may have to hold on to it a long time and give it a lot of house room before, before it gains in value. But as they were saying, you don't want to open the box because the collector is going to want it new in box. Now let's look ahead to some of the other trends that are really emerging in this area. What's really standing out for you? Well, I think a lot of things are, are standing out. Certainly the, in collectibles, the, the small vinyl collectibles have been really big. The, all the lines like Shopkins that we've seen and, and all kinds of uh, other things like that. But the other big trend we're going to see in 2017 is movie-related toys. There are 27 movies coming out with toy programs, theatrical movies, plus TV, plus uh, Netflix and other distribution properties. But really, these are about kids and adults who are engaged with the, with the properties and then want to express that through toys. And speaking of expression, we know that there seems to be this increased interest in drawings and animation art. What are some of the preferred brands there and how big is the return on investment there? Well, absolutely, the number one everybody wants is Disney. And after Disney, probably classic Warner Brothers. Uh, some of the new ones are, are pretty interesting. Things like uh, uh, some of the old cell animation that we've seen with Bugs Bunny. He's part of Warner Brothers. Today, so much animation is done in the computer and on, on CGI that it's very you don't see the classic cells. But sometimes cells are made just for, for collectors. So we've seen them for Batman. We've seen them for other kinds of movies. And you have to, you have to match the, uh, the artwork with the fans just like any art collecting. Well, certainly we'll see how much of a payoff people get, whether they buy it for love or as a collectible. Thank you so much, Christopher Burns from Toys, Tots, Pets and more. Thank you.